is up, YouTube, and welcome back to Bald Man Reacts. I'm gonna do all of Yume's subscriber requests in one shot. It's gonna be five videos. I've been doing a lot of these, this style lately, and I do enjoy it. it. Does take a little bit more time, but I certainly enjoy the concept. And he wanted me to do them all in one go. So that's what I'm gonna do. The first one is DID and the track WOD2. Got some translations up in a separate window, so I will be checking those out. Let's go ahead and get into it. The band is DID, the track is WOD2, and here we go. <sighs> Gotta give it up to them wearing gas masks. That is certainly not a fun experience and not one that I enjoy. Really shanty, very cool stuff. Nice, solid, groovy, and familiar. That polyrhythmic chug going on. Really killer bass work here. That's outstanding. Do you certainly get the Duran Gray influence vocally? Get that gent influence musically. Really amazing interplay with the drummer and bass player. Camera angles for live can certainly be a bit jarring here. Really seamless breakdown. Very standard. Drummer is an absolute monster. Definitely get the co feel and the co influence vocally here. Get that in his vocal tone, get that in the way he's using that higher register, but it still sounds really good. Absolutely nasty big play. I really like the riffs here in that tap phrasing. Pretty impressive backflip, by the way. how they worked that that breakdown into the entire track didn't expect that transition into the solo I might have liked the fill there to move into it really well played solo nice little bit of feel there parts of it I really like how that lead's continuing. Shift that really nice tap passage. It's a really nice accent. D.I.D. The track was W.O.D. 2. Opening this one up. That was a nasty bit of gent. The lyrics are really well written. I enjoy them.
there. It's just a progressive. Actually, the lyrics are they're they actually they do they are enjoyable for as short as they are. Huh. It's a progressive genty beast. It really, really is very very heavy in a gent like way very aggressive the drummer is a machine but it's an incredibly well played drumming the interplay between the bass player and the drummer was really awesome to have that mirrored effect with the drum pattern and bass and the really technical and complicated bass pattern following each other they're all really really strong musicians and it's wonderful to hear that in that style they're definitely one of the most talented japanese bands i've heard doing the style i mean they're just really really talented players not to say that japanese bands aren't talented because they certainly are but these guys really have a good sense of what they're doing and they have the technique to back it up. I would have liked to drum fill or some accent to lead into that solo. It just hit straight out of that breakdown without any real any real help movement to help shift it, but it still worked and the rest of the transitions throughout the track are seamless. It's just that one that nags at me a little bit. Certainly here the Durin Gray and the Co influence in the vocals. There, it's there. I still like his highs. I'm not a. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the gurgle, but the more I listen to Durin Gray, the more I get used to it, and it's no longer a deal breaker like it used to be, where I just didn't like it and I just kind of got through it. I've gotten to the point now where I know it's there. I'm never going to completely enjoy it, but it's easier to digest on my palate than it used to be. And I don't know. I might get to enjoy, chance to enjoy it, but it's it doesn't turn me off like it used to. So it's nice to know that you can teach an old metalhead new tricks and my palate can evolve a little bit as far as my taste there. Okay. Overall, really good track, really enjoyable. I'm glad I got a chance to listen to it. The next we're getting into is Decadence. Got three, I think it's three music break tracks on the list. Yume is definitely a large Mijin Bray fan. So let's go ahead and get into it. The band is Mijin Bray, the track is Decadence. And here we go. Cool electronic and industrial moments there. Really like the guitar work, like that tone, like what the drums are doing. Almost getting kind of a Silver Sun pickups like feel with the guitar line and the, the mood. I do really enjoy his voice. I know some people find his vibrato a little too much, but I actually really like it. I really like the guitar stuff going on. There's a lot of textures back there. Really great movement in the bass line. A lot of that conversational style lyric that you expect from Japanese bands. Especially, especially the visual P band. I'm 
That poppy familiarity of the chorus that they love to throw in. Heavier passage, that polyrhythm, then that pulp muting really twists the track. It makes it feel differently. And again, with those sonic shifts that Major Ray love, where they'll give you something really heavy and they'll hit you with that really pleasant piano and the different tones and textures. You're always in for a ride, musically, when you listen to a music break track. Really like the guitar work there. Really great solo here. A lot of emotion, a lot of feel in what the guitar player is doing. I like the way he came out of that. And I like the spoken word over this nice heavy groove. This is a really enjoyable track. It's really interesting to have that spoken word passing through each headphone. It's a nice touch. I'm not going to lie, you do get kind of a Durin Gray feel here in the chorus. Trying to think of the track it reminds me of. I want to say it's the final. But. I don't really like it. Really nice vocal there. And again, you get that really cool opening riff here that really reminds me of something like Silver Sun Pickups with the way it just really grooves and glides and feels the ambient textures and the riff. Some really cool piano and bass stuff going on. Love the bass work here. Really phenomenal work. And that one's just going to take us right out. That was Misha Bray. The track was Decadent. Second of five today. And I really enjoyed it. You know, it's... It's another suicide song. And, well, if you follow Misha Bray at all, the vocalist is a, uh, he's a very emotional guy. And he tends to, <laughs> tends, tends to have a few, uh, a few suicide songs in his repertoire. I noticed that when I did the Theatrical Roses record. It was also requested by Yame. And, provided all those amazing translations for me, which certainly makes my life a whole lot easier. It's a really enjoyable track. Again, there's so many different elements. There's so many different textures. There's different vocal layers. They give you different emotions. And 
it's but it's still easy to listen to. I think that's the beauty about what they do is you get thrown a lot of different styles in a music Bray track. And they shift really seamlessly. It ties in together. It's able to evoke emotion out of me. Uh, there's a lot of technicality in what they do. And I just it chalk chalk it up to really great musicianship and to really good songwriting that they're able to make all of those stylistic shifts work and they're able to make it seamless. And it's another good track. It's another really, really enjoyable track. And I appreciate it. Thank you once again, my friend. The third track we're getting into you is another Misha Bray track. And this one is Shui. Apparently, this is poetry. So let's go ahead and check this out. The band, once again, is Misha Bray. The track is Shui. And here we go. Oh, this one's actually uh, Healthy RC translation, and her translations are phenomenal. She does a great job. <laughs> you get a lot of those new metal feelings here. Big, punchy grooves in the bass lines. Really nice riffing. Like that harmony line over the heaviness of that riff. Really like that counterpoint again with the lead guitar lines there. I love that progression. It's one of my favorite styles of progressions guitar wise. You hear a lot of bands using similar feeling progressions, and I dig it. Absolutely love the bass tone in this track. And the space is occupied. Nice doubling of that lead line there. Their guitar player is such a phenomenal player. He's got great feel. I love players that can play with technique and still have a great feel and still evoke emotion out of their solos. Great vibrato there at the end as well. Like how that drum pattern's changing just a little bit out of different field of the passage. Love that dark, haunting, almost foreboding feeling here.
again with those really haunting screams that he likes to unleash vocally. That was an awesome track. Didn't really get and understand the video, but that was an awesome track. It was really well done from a musical standpoint. The lyrics, once again, are very powerful, very emotional. Their vocalist certainly wears his heart on his sleeve and in his lyrics. Love everything about it. It's really enjoyable. It's one that I could immediately go back to and listen to again. Musicianship is top-notch. Really loved the bass playing. I love the mix. The bass has so much room and such a great space inside the track. Far too often in heavy music, bass players get buried and they don't get credit for what they're doing and for just how good they are. And their bass player is really an essential part of what they're doing in this track. And just about every music break track I've heard, but the last two we've done here in this video series have really stood out. I think the solo is phenomenal. It was well played. It was well composed and well executed. Really, I'm a big fan of their lead guitar, of their, I guess their guitar player. Really understands what he's doing. He's got really strong technique and he understands how to evoke emotion out of it as well. And great job. Really liked the vocals. I liked how it was spoken word for most of it, but it did have that rhythmic, almost slightly sung feel to it. And then you got more of the singing in the verse and or the chorus. I'm sorry, the post chorus. Really, really, really strong track. Really dug that one. Very easy to listen to. Very enjoyable. Track four is more Misha Bray. The next track is going to be Hi. Hi, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I guess it's called Sorrow. This is actually one of uh, Yume's personal translations again. And this is live. This is the Hangman Tour final. So here we go. Like the orchestral and symphonic feelings going on. I like the violin. I'm not sure if it's actual violin or if it's done by keyboards, but it still sounds really good. Definitely get a bit of a during gray feeling here. Really like the drum work. Sounds really good vocal here. I like that higher register is Oh, I 
Love what he's able to do with his voice. Another one of those songs that's really pretty, but it makes you feel on edge. They do a really good job of giving you that emotional feel. Built really well. I love that tortured, angsty feeling you get out of the performance here. Locally. Really puts so much into it. I love how that drum pattern almost, almost feels like a heartbeat. Very, very well done. Nice trio from. Misha Bray, very, again, very well done and highly enjoyable. Uh, diff all three of them different tracks. They have a very different feel other than, other than the, the one thread or common thread of they all just make you feel on edge. They really just get to you. And make you feel uncomfortable. And because of that, it might be easier to latch on to the different emotions I feel like they're trying to convey musically and sonically. But it's really enjoyable. And Major Bray is not a band that I really expected to like and enjoy. Heck, to be honest, I didn't know what I was getting into when I first heard them. But they're a band that is really grown on me, and I find them very easy to listen to. They're certainly one of the Japanese bands that I can easily that well, the Japanese band, the Visual K bands, I should say, because I could easily go and listen to some of the Japanese Doom bands all day long. But they really, they're really an easy band for me to listen to. And I really appreciate the translations as well. They make that they make being able to get the whole picture for me easier. Now, when I'm doing a reaction, it's easier to to have everything and not just and feel like I'm missing something. I mean, I can always judge it on the music, but I like to be able to judge the track as a whole. And you know, I'm able to connect with this on all the levels, especially having the translation to really understand what he's talking about lyrically. Certainly can see why they have the fan base they do. People that really are able to grasp the emotion of their vocalist and what he's trying to accomplish in the music. And they're all just amazing players. Thank you for those three, my friend. I truly appreciate it. That was good. That was great stuff. The last track, the band Mega track is Guilt Trip. Personal note, there's definitely his most played childhood song for an emotional ending. All right, so the last and final track is Nega. The track is Guilt Trip, and here we go. I don't know if I've ever heard them. Before. Really nice acoustics here. Really nice lead back there. Very subtle. I like the different tones you're getting from the two from the different acoustic guitars.
another really nice bass line. Then again, I am listening to Visual Gay. And it's rare to find a bad bass player or a bad bass line on a Visual Gay track. Didn't expect it to kick in like that. I like it. You're gonna laugh. But with the riffs and the bass line, it kinda makes me feel like I'm listening to second out the second Cranberries record. Really nice touches here. Very early 90s alternative. Really nice symbol work there. I like the vocals. I really like his voice. It's just, I think it adds to the emotion in a way when some of the lyric gets lost because it gets a little slightly buried by the instrumentation. Almost like it plays to that drama. I like the orchestral elements there that vocal thing that he's doing. Got a slightly lower register for most of the singers that I hear in Visual K, and I really like what he's doing. I really like the different guitar accents, the drama here in the chorus. That's a nice shift. I certainly didn't expect that. I really like this lead here. A lot of feel to it, it's a nice touch. Interesting pick scrapes going on as they're getting ready to build into you a heavier passage. Wow, really like that lead tone there. Very, very clean. I like the harmonizing of this lead line here. well played. This passage is so beautiful, it's you can just get lost inside of it. Though that slight stutter kind of threw me off. I like that falsetto used is there.
really interesting guitar textures that add different elements. Really start to get that emotion. Another really nice change here. Really like that bass run. And I love how it's working with this jazz like guitar texture. Really well played. Really beautiful. Big, powerful, pain screaming. Really starts to pull at you. Lyrics have some really powerful imagery as well. I love how they're going to ride out this really nice groove. Whew. That was definitely an emotional one. The track was called Guilt Trip, the band was Nega, and that's a heck of a way to close out a playlist. Wow. Outstanding. It was a beautiful track. It was very powerful. It was very emotional. I really like the way it was written. I love all the different tones and textures once again. There's so many different things going on. They do a great job of making you feel something. I like the musicianship and the technicality involved, as well as just how easy it is to listen to you musically. I really like that deeper register of the vocalist. Certainly get a little darn gray there and there's pain screams, though I gotta be honest. I don't know if I've ever heard a Japanese vocalist do those painful, sorrowful screams as good as Ko does them. And that's just a personal opinion, but he tends to hit those notes with me that I just haven't I can't see another one to match. Though the the Gurgamesh, no, no, I, I, I take that back. The Gurgamesh track for A Dying World, when the vocalist just lets those painful, almost wails emit from his voice, is probably one of the most striking that I've heard in a long time. I was very passionate. But the vocalist here does it really well, and it really adds, again, another layer of depth and emotion to the track. This is a great list, my friend. I truly appreciate it. I appreciate the support. I thank you for wanting to support me financially through Patreon. I, I, I cherish that, but I cherish the friendship and the support you've given the channel and the the music that you've introduced me to and the effort you put into your translations even more. You know, it's an incredible thing and you definitely make it incredibly easy for me to listen to Visual K 
You're very, very passionate about it, as many of you are here on the channel. And it makes going into things that a few months ago were certainly out of my wheelhouse and completely out of my comfort zone much easier. And it's become such an incredible part and an integral part here of the channel. But five very good, five really enjoyable tracks. There isn't one that I didn't like. I'm not going to try to pick a favorite, but great stuff. I like the the open the opening with DID. I like the nice three pack of Mija Bray. I like closing with this Nega track. I don't think I've done any Nega on the channel, so it's nice to get them out and get. For it's a first for me. Great, great list. Thank you so much. I'm sorry it's taken me a few days to get to it, but I really appreciate it, my friend. Outstanding. I look forward to hearing, or I look forward to hearing what you decide to give me for next month. And if you want me to continue, just doing them all in one shot for you, because I really don't. I don't mind. And it's a. It's a nice feeling, man. You did a really good job structuring them together. I hope all of you guys that watch this enjoy this. I know you've certainly been requesting more Misha Bray. Got that covered. I don't know if I've had any mega requests. I might. And I'm not sure about DID, but I think it's a cool five. I think it's a cool five tracks, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you all so much for all the support. Thank you so much for checking out all the different stuff I do here and spending some time with me every week. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you to my law enforcement, military, veterans, and first responders for what you do every single day. As always, you have been awesome. I have been Bald Man. I will see you in the next one. Be excellent to each other and keep it.